Okay, everyone, how are we doing? I'm very well, thank you. We are at Thursday, I think, nearly at the end of another working week. From uh, tomorrow, well, basically just tomorrow, we will preview the game against Kilmarnock. But on today's video, we're doing something a little bit different, just taking a look at the state of transfers to do with Celtic, both in and out. It is now the 5th of January, and it is indeed a Thursday, I had to double check there. That's five days we've had of January, and not a single Celtic signing. Hmm. That may be because we now do our business in November and December. So yeah, today's video, we're going to work our way through the transfer chat, both in and out, and effectively set the scene for what may be to come over the next 630 hours or so. As previously mentioned in the intro, we have already signed three players this month, in the months of November and December. The first was Yuki Kobayashi on a five-year deal from Vissel Kobe. We then had Alistair Johnston, or Alistari Johnston as I've got him written down here for some reason, on a five-year deal from CF Montreal in the MLS, and most recently, Tomoki Iwata from Yokohama F Marinos. That's a six-month loan, but with a compulsory purchase clause included. On the way out this month, so far, in fact, it may have been announced last month, the only player so far is Johnny Kenny, who has joined Shamrock Rovers on loan for 2023. In terms of other outgoings, there are two names that have dominated and will continue to dominate the discourse when it comes to Celtic outgoings this month. They are, of course, JJ and Gigi, that's Josip Juranovic and Jorgios Yakamakis. Juranovic has been the big one. It seems like chat of him leaving the club has gone on for months and months from well before the World Cup, throughout the World Cup, and since he's come back, and the fact that he didn't start at Ibrox, and the fact that he struggled so much when he came on for Greg Taylor, kind of ups the ante with regards to chat about him leaving the club next month. I don't have any ITK information about Juranovic, but I think it's fair to say there's a general sense amongst the Celtic support that he's not going to be a Celtic player come February the 1st. I guess the only things we really have to sort out are A, who he signs for, and you've got a fair few options there that we'll talk about in a second, and B, how much money he goes for. I have seen anything from, I think, £8 million going up to £17 million being mentioned as a potential price. It's uh, difficult to stick a price tag on Juranovic at the moment because he's gone from being arguably the best player on the pitch in a World Cup quarter final for Croatia to being the worst player on the pitch against Rangers on Monday. I would still hope Celtic would get £15 million plus for Josip Juranovic given that he did so well at the World Cup given that he's done so well for us generally over the last 18 months, and given some of the clubs that are interested in him, namely Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Manchester United, Chelsea and Monza. And Monza seems a little bit out of their depth when uh, when added to the previous four names. But yeah, we'll see where Juranovic ends up, as I say, I think he'll leave. Personally, I'm not losing too much sleep over it and him. I think he's been a good player for Celtic, a really good signing for two and a half million pounds. But I think Alistair Johnson can be an even better signing for Celtic. Based on that one game at Ibrox so far, I think he has everything we need in a right back. And if Juranovic moves on and Alistair Johnson becomes a very good Celtic right back, given Ralston's there as well, I think all Celtic fans would be very happy. In terms of Jorgius Yakimakis, I feel a little bit differently about this one just because we don't have the same array of options in uh, that area of the park. It is basically just him and Kyogo at the moment. If Yakimakis goes, we effectively only have one striker. I know Maida can play up front, but it's clear to see that Anne sees him more effective on the wing. And yeah, I I kind of hinted at Yakimakis being a potential shock departure in a video 
I did probably would have been at the end of November. I think days after that, the Yakimakis chat started to arrive. I didn't know anything about this. Um, I should say right now, I genuinely don't have sources. I don't kid on to, to really have sources at all. But I just had a feeling about Yakimakis, given that he's been such a goal scorer for Celtic and given that he doesn't regularly play, I felt he was the kind of player who would kind of come up on other clubs kind of scouting missions as a, a potential sign and it seems like that's the case as well. I've had like cryptic messages online, we've had him coming on and some people saying that he looks quite angry uh, and almost upset and not getting more game time. I've kind of tried to bat those away a little bit but I do get the impression that we're going to see Yakimakis move on this month. It just feels as if it's heading that way. We've had a couple of clubs interested. I think Everton were mentioned a while ago. The most recent one uh, is FC Michelin interested in Yakimakis for as low as five million. Apparently, I'd hope that we'd get nearer ten million for him if he moves on. But again, it's all about the replacements that we have, and we'll come on to them in a wee second because I sense that the sh- the forward area is going to be where most of the talking goes on for the rest of the month. Other players that we expect to see move on from Celtic this month, number one, Oliver Abogard, potentially back to Denmark. He's not a permanent Celtic player. The club were very vague about the wording when he was signed. I think season-long deal was the, the words that they use. It seems like it's almost a loan, so we wouldn't receive any fee if he moves on, but it hasn't worked out for him. Equally, Yosuke Idiguchi with a return to Japan, I think the most likely for him. Looking at the rest of our, our squad, other players I'd like to see movement on are James McCarthy, who now has just 2.5 years left on his contract maybe we could move him out on loan he's just not going to get much game time so as much for his career as our own kind of needs Stephen Welsh last seen competitively in early October is he going to get much game time between now and the end of the season with the likes of Starfelt obviously Carter Vickers Jens and even Kobayashi probably ahead of him now I would have my doubts Scott Robertson also set to move on too. He got in trouble for publicly ending his Celtic stay. Remember, Ange didn't seem too happy about that when he was told at a press conference. And just finally, uh, I don't expect to see any movement this month, but Moritz Jens, he's on a season-long loan at Celtic. Are we going to sign him permanently in the summer? I think he's been fine. I think he's been good uh, for the most part. But is he going to drastically improve Celtic as much as, say, Carter Vickers or Jota did in the summer? Signing them permanently was a no-brainer. I'm not sure if I have the same feeling about Jens, to be honest. But maybe that's slightly harsh. I'm sure you'll let me know. So that's the, the kind of going away part out of the way. What about players coming in? So already we have signed a first team right back. We've signed a potential first team centre back, someone who's going to be eased into the action, and just said, and Kobayashi, and we've signed a versatile midfielder defender, probably a holding midfielder is going to be his role in Iwata, who I think could make a bigger impact than people realise, I really think he's going to bring us some of what we don't have in the midfield at the moment. I'm reckoning, and it's hardly going to be a surprise to say this, that a striker would be The big want for for Ange and the support this month. The main player I've been linked with so far is Cho Gae Sung, the South Korean forward who netted twice at the World Cup. Now in the last few days his agent has confirmed that Celtic are in negotiations with the player. Olympiakos also said to be interested although Galatasaray chat is apparently wrong, incorrect according to the agent. We've been hearing that Celtic uh, have been interested for a fair amount of time, well before the World Cup, but that perhaps his performances at the World Cup have almost worked against us 
in that other clubs have now been alerted to his talents. He scored a hell of a lot of goals for Jonbuck Hyundai Motors and they would apparently rather wait to sell him in the summer. We know that Ange doesn't tend to like to wait for things. He'll want him in as soon as possible, especially if Yakimakis is indeed leaving this summer. So that's going to be one to watch. He, to me, seems like Celtic's number one choice in terms of strikers, and we do believe that this is genuine Celtic really quite like him and have liked him for a while but other names have also been mentioned potential backup should the Choge Sung stuff not happen such as Rosenberg's Casper Tengstead he's been mentioned by Football Scotland one of the top scorers in Norway last season also even more recently we've heard the name Syed Hamulik uh, mentioned again. I think that first came out start of December, but in the last couple of days, that's kind of come up again. He's a Dutch slash Bosnian, 22-year-old striker, £2.2 million being mentioned for him. He scored nine league goals for Polish club Stal Milik this season. I had never heard of that club before, so at least I've learned something from this video. Uh, it seems like uh, Tengstead, Hamulik, and uh, even another South Korean Oh Hyun Gyu or anyone else for that matter is a backup option. Cho Gae Sung seems like the main target. He's 24 years old, by the way, so bit of experience, scored a lot of goals, already played at a World Cup, seen as a, a real kind of current and future player for the South Korean national team and someone we're well aware of. So he's a big name to keep an eye on, and I think if we can sign him, that would be uh, kind of capping off a really successful transfer window. Elsewhere on the pitch, another South Korean in the form of midfielder Kwon Hyuk Q has been mentioned. He plays in the second tier in South Korea with a club called Busan E Park, and reports have tended to be from his homeland rather than Scotland. So that doesn't make them any less credible. Uh, it's just worth pointing that out. Uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv's Oscar Gluck has been mentioned, but that seems more like paper talk than genuine interest. He seems like the kind of next big thing to come from Israel, obviously other than Lee Alabada. They're talking five to six million pounds for him. He is potentially another one that's on the list of like potential signings for Celtic should a big name be targeted. Just the organisation at Celtic right now is remarkable. We're nine points clear at the top of the league and already by the start of the January window we had three new signings in the building. Well, not technically in Awata's case, but um, you know, three new signings confirmed. And I just think that's just a statement of intent that even though we're the best team in the country by, I would say a fair margin, you know, nine points and Ange still thinks we can be so much better and he's still going to keep taking us up the levels. It's a worrying and scary thought for the rest of the league, but a really good one as a Celtic fan. Uh, yeah, I reckon striker is a big one to look at for the rest of the month, but I also have a funny feeling we may get a wee surprise elsewhere in the terms of another signing. A bit like Matt O'Reilly last year. I don't think anyone was really expecting Ange to go for another attacking midfielder when we had Hatate, uh, Turnbull and Rogic in the building at that stage. And O'Reilly kind of came out of nowhere. So I think um, we could see something similar this year. Um, would it be uh, another winger? Perhaps we do seem pretty well stocked up in wingers, but maybe a, a bit more quality. Would it be a goalkeeper? Perhaps there's been a wee bit of chat about that um, in kind of recent weeks and months. But I certainly think a, a striker is going to be signed at some stage, and we'll have to wait and see what happens with Yakamakis. As always, Ange will want these signings in as soon as possible. And on the subject of Ange, I will be speaking to the Celtic manager and a first-team player at tomorrow's press conference ahead of the Kilmarnock game. We will bring you that on tomorrow's video, as well as all the previewing needed ahead of the visit of Kilmarnock to Celtic Park on Saturday. So hopefully I've kind of whetted your appetite a little bit for the January transfer window albeit that we're like a sixth of the way through the month already. Hopefully you'll forgive us for that. And hopefully we see another month of busy action. I guess we already kind of have. Chat to you tomorrow.